man, I got to tell you, it's good to see you here. I mean, think about it. I'm only here for you. So if you don't show up, I'm wasting my time. So thanks. I'm John Zadar. I'm the host of On Top and Hot. And this is Wednesday. It is May 10th, which reminds me, I got to remind you, I have a live streaming event tomorrow. I do this every Thursday, 4 o'clock Eastern Standard Time. When that market bell is going off, I'm going on. And I'm on YouTube for about an hour. We're there talking to our viewers live about tickers that they want us to look at together. Now, what I'm hoping is that you're doing your due diligence and you're finding some charts that are really hot, looking like they're going to break out. And maybe you want to find a catalyst. Bring it on. Let's see what we can find. Now, I've got to say, we haven't had enough time to look at all the tickers being presented here recently, which is a good thing and a bad thing. So, first come, first served. But you don't have to wait till 4 o'clock to give me your ticker. I put the YouTube placement up early, like 1 o'clock, 2 o'clock in the afternoon, and you can post your ticker right then and there. First come, first served. Remember, that's tomorrow, 4 o'clock Eastern Standard Time, every Thursday. So what we do on this show is we look for OTC and penny stocks that have potential to make us money. And we're not restricted to any market. We're on all of them because a penny stock is nothing more than a stock under five bucks. And they're everywhere. Well, I've got some stocks I want to share with you today. And just coincidentally, a theme fell into place here. Artificial intelligence. All these stocks are dealing with artificial intelligence, which I think is going to be huge. We have no idea where it's going to go. I mean, really, it's like shooting a rocket up into the sky that we're not controlling. It just goes up and up and up, and we have no idea where it's going to land. we got to watch this for better or for worse. Now, all of these stocks have good charts. All of them have got catalysts. They could run at any time, but I'm actually looking down the road. Now, I'm not talking 10 years because artificial intelligence grows really fast. I mean, you saw how uh, chat GPT came out, then it went to version uh, 2, skipped version 3 because it was growing so fast, went to version 4. There is now Fox GPT, Beatty's GPT. They're coming out, and they're coming out in groves, and they're growing very fast. So the market, I'm expecting, is going to grow very fast too. So the first one we're going to look at is on the NASDAQ. This is ticker QUBT, Quantum Computing Inc. Now, I've got some information to share with you, but we're going to pick it up as we go along because quantum computing is like rocket science. You got to be a brainiac and a genius to understand it, and I'm not going to try to fake it with you. I'll tell you what little I know and what they share with you, but we're not going to get too deep into it. So, QUBT, she's got a good chart, she's got catalysts, and she's moving into commercialization. That's why we're really looking at her. She's been doing research and development. Like if biotech, a pharmaceutical company, they've been looking for answers, and they believe they've come up with it, and they're ready to commercialize, and it could be really big. QUBT, she finished the day at $1.26, even Steven. I looked at the chart. She was up. She was down. She had gains. She had losses, but she just ended where she opened. So we are at even Steven there. So what does quantum computing do? Well, they work with quantum computing. I'll read their description here. Quantum computing is focused on developing novel applications and solutions utilizing quantum and quantum ready computing techniques to solve difficult problems in various industries. The company is leveraging its team of experts in financing, computing, security, mathematics, and physics to develop commercial applications, which is what it's all about, for industries and government agencies that will need quantum computing power to solve their most challenging problems. All right, I'm going to tell you everything I know right now, <laughs> which is about that much about quantum computing. I did do some research. You can get a great YouTube video about the guy who invented D-Wave. He's talking on stage uh, back quite a few years ago, and it's going to blow your mind. I'm telling you, it's science fiction. It's going to blow your mind. But I want to say this. Our standard computers, they have two stages, two settings. They have yes and no, a zero or a one on, off, up, down, left, right. That's the way they work. Well, quantum computing does that too, but it also has yes and no together or neither, 
no yes or no and these are applicable it can work with it but and here's where it gets strange it does other things too quantum entanglement which i am not even going to try to explain except to say it has a way of working with data oh i hate to use this word uh interdimensionally yeah right like i said science fiction and that's as deep as i'm going right there i'll let them tell you whatever else we learn so what was the relative volume around qubt today not much she is under her average of 191,000 down to 169,000. now in looking at the volume i want to make this clear all three of the stocks are involved with artificial intelligence and they have all got potential there is no doubt about that but i'm not looking at these stocks to give you a runner for tomorrow or this week or next week i mean they could run no doubt about that either i am looking at this down the road six months a year i mean you could call it a long hold because as i said ai grows fast what would take 10 years for most companies to do they may do in a year i mean that's food for thought so these companies have potential for growth maybe in a day or a week but definitely down the road a few months or even a year what is the share structure for quantum computing they tell us here we got 60 million shares outstanding and possibly the float could be 22 million now i think that's close but i don't think it's accurate the reason i say that is the restricted shares the ones that don't go on the market these are for insiders, institutions, hedge funds, things like that. Insider shares. They got 33 million of them. Well, these two have to add up to the outstanding shares. So 60 minus 33 should leave us 27. So I'm figuring 26, 27 million in the float. Looking at the financials for quantum computing. She did have some money coming in at the end of 2022. Not a lot. $135,000. We know that's thousands and not 135 bucks because they tell us to add three zeros to any of the numbers down here. And gross profit, they got to keep $74,000. Looking at the quarterly, it got worse. Well, every quarter was falling and they made $1,000 the very last quarter. And we don't see anything here. There should be one coming out, but I wouldn't really expect any revenues on it. What I do want to look at is since they're not making any money, do they have any money? What are their assets? Well, let's work from the bottom up. Total liabilities, they got 14 million. You gotta put three zeros here too. 14 million total liabilities. They got 89 million in total assets. So they're up like 75 million. And they've got 5.3 million in the bank. So they're not making money right now, but they are financially sound. Looking at the company's disclosures. All right, we've got a recent financial here that came out April 14th. You can get a lot of information about the company in there. We've got lots of Form 4s. Form 4s are filled out whenever insiders dispose or acquire shares of the company. Now, that doesn't just mean buy or sell, though it can be. Here, I see the CEO got a bonus, but in lieu of cash, he took shares of stock. So he acquired stock, but he really didn't buy it. And that's really what we've got going on here. But there is an 8K here I found very interesting. This is a company presentation. It is in the filing, but it's probably also on their website. This is a breakdown of everything the company does for the investors to read. It's supposed to be the easy version of their information. As if there's such a thing when it comes to quantum computing. Now, there's a lot of information here, and I only want to tag on to a couple things to give you an impression of what's going on. First off, the money that's wrapped around this sector. They're talking here about how it is globally growing and what it was worth. In 2020, it was worth $320 million. Not very much, right? And then by 2024, they anticipate it to be $830 million. Doesn't sound like a lot, but check this out. Grandview Research predicts that the high-performance computing market will reach $61 billion by 2027. Folks, we just went from $830 million in 2024 in three years up to $61 billion. 
That's what I'm talking about. This artificial intelligence, quantum computing is way beyond anything we've ever seen. And the more data they get, the smarter they get, the faster they grow, the more they can do. So the growth is going to be impressive, unlike anything we've ever seen, unprecedented. Some more information here. The US government, very interested in quantum computing along with other things and they're pouring money into it. Back in 2019, they put in almost a half a billion dollars. As of 2022, in 2022, they did $877 million just for research and development. They're looking for solutions using quantum computing. Then I learned that they had actually passed this bill not too long ago called the Chips and Science Act. And they tell us here the Chips and Science Act directs $280 billion in spending over the next 10 years. According to McKinsey and Company, the CHIPS Act will accelerate research and development and commercialization of leading edge technologies such as quantum computing, AI, clean energy, and nanotechnology. The other thing I just want to point out here, since it was available to be seen, lots of information, like I said. So take your time. Come over here and you can get a lot more than I'm sharing with you right now. I wanted you to see this. Inside ownership is virtually 50%. Half of the company. They've got as much invested as we do and as much to gain as we do. The next thing I want to share with you is the news. The piece of news I want to share with you came out on the 27th, but I want you to see that they are involving themselves, but most of it is all with research and development. Quantum Computing, their wholly owned subsidiary, QI Solutions, joins Arizona Defense and Industry Coalition. That same subsidiary joins the Industry University Cooperative Research Center. And then they've got something going here. They launch a reprogrammable and non-repeatable quantum random number generator. That doesn't sound too exciting to me. But they're doing research and development. And this one here, Quantum Computing's Reservoir Quantum Computer to demonstrate the power of artificial intelligence via partnership with Millions AI. Let's jump into this. So they tell us here that quantum computing is a first to market full stock photonic based quantum computing and solutions company. And today they announced the signing of a memorandum of understanding with AI firm Million Ways to demonstrate the power of artificial intelligence when combined with quantum computing. Folks, this is, I just don't know what this is. This is like mixing gas and fire. I mean, you're taking two very new uh, concepts in computing and bringing them together when they both have really, really strong potential. They go on to tell us that the goal of this partnership, and this is interesting, is to explore and determine the business value of the combination of Million Ways AI algorithms and QCI's existing RQC system using audio files to produce an emotional scoring capability. If successful, the companies will develop a joint marketing and business development plan to pursue commercial opportunities. Million Ways, a New York City-based technology firm, is a leader in the development of AI algorithms used to effectively provide next-generation feedback to users on their emotional IQ and personality insights. QCI's RQC can process audio files and enable the emotional intelligence to directly process a whole new medium of voice, creating applications that will expand AI into useful business and personal consumer uses. This is the first joint commercial application of our reservoir computing technology. Over the past few months, we have done lots of internal tests on our system, which has built our confidence in the opportunity of transforming the world of AI with quantum. If we progress as we expect, we should be in the market with a commercialized application or product by year end of 2023, if not sooner. Now they've got things they want to use this for. AI and the quantum computing are going to figure out what emotional state we are in. 
what sort of emotional person we are. And they're going to use this information for their benefit. For example, marketing to people who are in the market to buy things. Your message is going to come across to them better if you know their emotional state. You can communicate better if you understand how a person feels. Another example is a company. If they are hiring a dream team and they want these high execs with qualities, this is going to be able to pinpoint those emotional stabilities that they want in their dream team. And there's a lot of other applications and we can't even see where this is going to go, folks. Quantum computing is, oh, it's mind boggling. AI is intelligent and growing at an incredible rate and as I said between quantum and AI we're gonna have an explosion and this is the first company to have a joint venture like this so I'm expecting big things how fast could it happen well who knows but down the road I'm expecting an explosion I can hear the bomb falling now <whistles> let's go check out that chart we are looking at QUBT, Quantum Computing, doing our charting on Thinkorswim. You can get this free just by signing up with TD Ameritrade. So this is a six month, four hour view for QUBT. And she's been running downhill from high bubble to low bubble, $3.50 six months ago, and she hit $1.05 maybe five days ago. Had one real strong breakout here in uh, January. She went from about $1.78 up to $3.50, almost 100% run, but came down very quickly. And right now she is starting another breakout. At least it looks like it. She's bounced off of that low bubble, gone through her 50, broke the 200. That's the first tap, tap, tap. She's fallen back down and she's sitting on that nine day SMA, getting ready to tap, tap, tap again. Oscillators, they have been pushing up, but with this day, you've got a little bit of slowing down, don't you? Looking at our 20-day, one-hour view. So there's our high bubble over this time period of $1.38 when she was on top of the 200. She came down to that low of $1.05, bounced off of that in one day. Look at all the excitement jumping from the 50 to the 200. And she's gotten up there and doesn't want to come back down. She's sitting up there right now, waiting probably for that 50-day SMA to cross the 200. When that happens, that's a golden cross. It's a power sign. We expect to see a push on the price. Our oscillators... Well, they are actually more depressed than excited. Everything is kind of pushing down right now except our PPO, our percentage price oscillator, which is a lot like the MACD. You read them the same, you need that blue line over top of the other line, and you want them pushing up. But as you can see, she's basically going sideways with a lot of volatility in here. Five day, five minute. Nice, she's bounced off of that low bubble, put herself on top of the 200, floated way above it on her 50. The 50s come back down to the 200 and everything is just scooting across the 200 right now. It looks good and we've got strong recovery right there. Our crossover on our PPO pushing up. MACD just crossed the signal line. It's pushing up with green bars accumulating and our RSI is growing. It's at 56 right now. I like QUBT for six months down the road. I mean, as soon as they have a commercialized product, some emotional program, I don't know what it's going to be, it's going to explode because companies are going to want this to make money off of their advertising or whatever else they think this can do. So QUBT, it should be on your watch list for a while. We got another AI penny stock from the NASDAQ here. This is VS versus Systems. She just had news come out today about her involvement with artificial intelligence and her chart has been working it hard. So VS finished today at 75 cents with just a little over 19% gains. Now I'm gonna bypass this description and I'm gonna use the one they put in their most recent press release. Versus Systems is an engagement and rewards company that makes live events, games, shows, and apps more fun to watch and play. Versus adds interactive games, polling, trivia, predictive elements, and other win conditions to existing entertainment, whether it be in venue or online, making the content more contextual, personal, and rewarding.
versus works with world-class sports teams, leagues, venues, entertainment companies, and other content creators to make engaging, rewarding experiences for fans all over the world. So what was a relative volume today on top of that news? Huge. Everybody paying attention to it, obviously, jumping from 1.1 million shares a day, that's the average over the last 30 days, to over 20 million today. Share structure for the company is great. I don't know what the float is, but I know it's super duper small. Outstanding share count is only 4.1 million. It's not going to be more than that. So regardless what it is, it's very small. Financials for VS. All right, at the end of 2022, she had $1.1 million and she got to keep all of it. Look at that. Didn't cost her one red penny for that. But that's the sort of business they're in. They're working with digital advertising. You don't need a factory for that. You don't have to buy materials. That is a cheap business to run. Lots of profit. And on the quarterly, I don't think we have anything new. No, we don't. So let's jump on over to those disclosures. All right, we've got two here that I want to mention. You got a 20F. This is a different type of financial, but that is their financial, and that came out at the end of March. Lots of information, as I say, in these financials. So if you want to learn about the company, forget Google, forget your searches out there on the Internet, jump into the most current financial, and you will get everything from the day they started. And then we did have one come out yesterday. This is an F1. Now, you might as well think of this as a pre-filing. It's not an actual filing, but it is important. It gives us a heads up of where their head's at. This is a pre-filing for a public offering. They tell us here the information in this preliminary prospectus is not complete and may be changed. And each one of these blank spots would normally have a number up to how many common shares, how many pre-funded warrants. So they have no numbers here. However, they do give us an idea of where their head is at. They are thinking about putting $7.5 million worth of common shares on the open market. What that means, at the current price, 75 cents, you're looking at roughly 10 million more shares. Well, the outstanding share count is about 4 million. So you're looking at more than tripling the share count which means you are going to cut the shareholder value by 66% or more. So hopefully they're not going to do that. Jumping on over to that news. We've got two pieces of news here I want to look at. Versus Systems provides corporate update. This gives us some more insight into their financials since we didn't get a whole lot here. And then that news that came out today about the artificial intelligence. Looking at that first news press. This did come out March 29th. This gives us a lot of insight into their financials. They're better than we thought they were. They're not making a lot of money, but they're getting a lot of money. They tell us here that their operating cash burn is now down to $550,000 a month, which is 60% less than they were doing last year. They just closed a $2.1 million public offering in December. They got to keep that $2.1 million. They also recorded $4.4 million in warrants exercised for cash in February. They got to keep that too. They also closed a $2.25 million registered direct offering in February. Yeah, they got to keep that too. That is virtually $9 million that they have just gotten and they're hanging on to. So they're not making revenues, but they're bringing in a lot of money. And I'm sure they got plans to use that money for something. Now, they had a new product come out last year called Winfinity. This is a program that connects their advertising to all of their brands. And they launched a new program just in March, just a month ago, and they launched it to 100 locations. Now, this I found interesting. They say it's driving and increasing their venue beverage sales by 15%. What beverage? I have been everywhere and I couldn't find a beverage. I went to their website, looked everywhere. So I'm not quite sure what they're talking about, but at least it's good. And the last thing they tell us here, they are expecting AI enhanced developments in the summer of 2023. Well, that news press just came out today. They tell us here that the company announced that the U.S. Patent and Trademark Office has issued versus a new patent titled Processing and Content Challenges for Online Gaming System. It is a patent that describes uses of machine learning and artificial intelligence that can optimize in-game coupons and rewards for both the player and the prize-providing brand. 
Now this patent, it covers 20 different protected claims using machine learning and artificial intelligence to contextualize and personalize both digital and real world rewards inside the interactive media. The claims include advertising campaign optimization and player value optimization. This is the sixth patent that the USPTO has issued to Versus on the subject of interactive media and in-game rewards, and it is Versus' seventh patent overall. And through the seven patents, they have a hundred different claims that they are protecting. So this is what it's all about, the patents. More and more people are going to be coming out with AI programs, and they've got to patent what their programs can do or someone else is. And if they patent it, you can't do it. So the more patents they get, the more money they can make. And since they're working in advertising, you want to get those patents quick. And I think this has a good chance of running. The chart is working really hard right now. She doesn't look like she's ready to break out, but she doesn't look like she's ready to give up either. Let me share that with you. We are looking at ticker VS. That is a six month, four hour view and we have a huge high bubble on the board. That is $9 six months ago. And in December, she hit a low of 31 cents and pretty much has been going sideways all of that time. Now with this low float, she does get some huge spikes. You can see them here, big runs taking off. This one right here, that started at about 60 cents and went up to $4.20. That's 700% run right there. She came down pretty quick though. People are taking their profits in this market. And we had another bounce here. This one was a little smaller. It ran from about 60 cents up to $1.28. Over 100% there, but again, short-lived. Came down under a 200, and right now she's breaking that 200 again, hitting our very first support. She actually broke it and came all the way back down, and it was a huge drop. She hit up here at $1.06 and landed at 69 cents but she's on top of her nine day SMA. You really can't ask for anything better. If she's gonna fall and fall hard, stop on that nine day. That's a perfect place to bounce again. Our oscillators, our PPO and our MACD are pushing up, but they've had a little bit of pullback with these bars right there. And our RSI is also cooling off, currently at 56. Looking at our 20 day, one hour view. Well, our bounce to $1.28 was on top of the 200. When she came down, she broke her 200, hitting that low. And you can see our 50-day SMA has just crossed the 200. That is our golden cross. As soon as it did, look at that bounce. Lots of power, lots of power. Went all the way from the 200 to our first support. Then she fell back. It was short-lived, but I'd like to see it. Our oscillators say she is cooling off, but you can see that everything's come down and she is right above her 20. I would like to see her on top of her nine, but she is on her 20, which is pretty relevant. Looking at our five day, five minute view. So she's been hanging on to her 200 and it is on an incline. She is climbing slowly. Once that 50 day broke the 200 on the one hour. She had that big jump here. We didn't know that unless we were looking at the hourly chart here. It's like, why did she jump? Now we know why. She went from uh, 61 cents up to $1.07. That's about 80% gains. Came down and she's right back on top of her 200 where she likes to sit before she jumps. So if the company comes out with a good financial, a good piece of news, some sort of deal, I expect this to bounce again, especially if it's sitting on top of the 200. Our oscillators right now say she's very cool. But again, we're not looking at this for a run tomorrow or a run next week. It could with the right piece of news or filing, but I'm looking down the road three, six months, a year at the most with these sort of companies dealing with AI, right? Saving the best for last. I got another AI penny stock on the NASDAQ for you here. This is ticker TBLA, Taboola.com. This is a huge advertising company that works online with a lot of companies. Primarily, you'll find their logo and their links at the bottom of news articles. Well, they just came out with news today, and it was exciting news. They gave us a lot of good information, but they were primarily talking about their revenue potential with the new company they just made a deal with two months ago. And you know who this company is. I'm not going to tell you yet, but you know them. So TBLA, she finished today at $2.84 with almost 25% gains. 
So what was the relative volume around the company today? Nice jump, going from 731,000 to 4.6 million shares, a strong increase in volume. Share structure for Taboola. Well, we don't have anything but the outstanding shares, 295 million. I did give a peek on Google. Looks like maybe 168 million shares in the float. Financials for Taboola. Well, this company's making money. Remember, we got to put three zeros behind any of the numbers down here. So at the end of 2022, they did $1.4 billion worth of business, keeping almost a half a billion dollars. See, advertising is good money. Looking at their quarterly, we don't get a whole lot of information on their quarterlies. They tell us that the last quarter for 2022, they did 371 million and got to keep 133 million. Looking at her disclosures. Ooh, we've got a financial that just came out today and an 8K. The 8K is announcing the financial and I missed them both. So I have no idea what's in there. There's a little due diligence for you. Jumping over to the news. This is the news that came out today. Taboola beats guidance in Q1 on all metrics, raises midpoint revenue projections for 2023, announces up to $40 million of share buyback and a $50 million debt repayment. <laughs> Outstanding news. And we're going to dive into that one. But I want you to see something back here. I told you they've made a deal. Well, they've been making lots of deals. Here at the uh, middle of February, Time exclusively partners with Taboola. Time Magazine, you know who they are. They're a big company too, but that's not the one I'm talking about. I'm talking about this one. Taboola.com, upside potential following the Yahoo partnership. That's right, folks. We had news come out November of last year. Yahoo and Taboola enter a 30-year commercial agreement to generate more than $1 billion in annual revenue. Then we had a piece of news that came out January of this year. Yahoo and Taboola announced the closing of that 30-year strategic partnership. And just so you can see, it is in Chinese. I did translate it. It's just telling us that Taboola is now working with ChatGPT. When I click this open, it just comes up. Even if I go up here and say English, it won't put it in English. So what I do is I take each paragraph, I go over to Google, put in translate, uh, find the language, and I just drop it, and I got to read it. So they are now working with GPT as well. It is part of their program. So going to that news article itself, Taboola beats guidance in Q1 on all metrics. So I'm not gonna go through all the numbers. They're impressive, I'll let you go through them. But I do want to pick up on one number, gross profits, because they use that number through their projections, and you can see what we're looking at. Q1 2023 revenues, gross profit was $89 million. But their updated 2023 guidance raises the midpoint to 418 to 436 million. Now think about that. We are still in 2023, and right now it is May, the fifth month. So we got seven months to go. And they say they are going to jump from 89 million up to somewhere over 400 million. That is some serious growth in seven months, folks. But that isn't anything. Check this out. From where we are now, we are hyper focused on what we need to do to execute our objectives and mission. Once the Yahoo integration is 100% live, we expect to be at a 2.5 billion revenue run rate. This will still be a very small portion of the $70 billion open web market. So there remains a lot of growth for us to capture. To do what we are doing, we are laser focused on four company priorities. Performance advertising, e-commerce, bidding, and Yahoo. Yahoo is one of the four most important things because it's going to make them a ton of money. We have all we need to execute and generate our financial objectives. Folks, this is going to be huge. They're already making good money, and this is going to do what? 
quadruple it, uh, sextuple it. I don't even know what you use for a six or a seven. They're going to be growing at an astronomical rate. And don't forget, they're incorporating AI, which they haven't said a whole lot about, but we know the potential there as well. Let's go take a look at this chart. It is Tabula, ticker TBLA. That is a six month, four hour view. Our low bubble came right after her financials here in November of $1.52. Then here, November 28th is when they cut the deal with Yahoo. Had a huge run, lots of volume came in. She went from $1.80 up to $3.30, just shy of a 100% run. And from that time, she was on an uptrend until they closed the deal in January with Yahoo. And again, she jumped from $3.80 up to $5.80 and then it all fell away. Everything's done, right? This is talking about the deal, that's closing the deal. What else is there? Everybody takes their money and run. And she came all the way down here, which is still a good distance away from $1.52. She was up here at $2.19. Then the news came out today about the revenue potential. It's great to make a deal, but if it's not gonna make you any money, what good is it really? So now we're getting to the heart of the matter. And she took off today. She went from $2.30 up to $3.15 before she fell back and then continued her climb even after market. And look at our bars. Every single one of them's low is higher than the one before. That's what we wanna see. Volume was very strong today and our oscillators are even stronger. Every single one of them is pushing to the moon. What do I say? You can't lose if every oscillator is pointing up. Looking at our 20 day, one hour view. Steady downhill run to that low bubble. Bounced off of the low, up over a 50, just laying there waiting for something to come along, and boom, it came along today. She jumped from 230 up to $3.15, falling back to about 284, and right now looks like she's at around 290, still up above her nine-day SMA. She never came below it. Our oscillators. They are all pointing up and we are right up underneath the overbought on our ISI. Everything is still looking very promising. Five day, five minute. Well, she wasn't doing a whole lot of anything until today. She had that big rip very early, came down to her 50 and she's been negotiating with it and now she's sitting on top of everything, her 50 or 20 and her nine pushing up. Everything looks good. Look, the volume was pretty much nil before today. There was a lot today. Do you think there's gonna be a lot tomorrow? I mean, are things gonna to change tomorrow for the worse? No, this company is looking at making, the news said one billion. The news press said 2.1 billion. Any way you look at it, they're going from 89 million profit to well over a half a billion dollars in profit. That is some serious growth. TBLA, it belongs on your watch list now and even a consideration of an entry. I've given you three stocks that are working with AI, QUBT, VS, and TBLA. All of these companies have artificial intelligence being incorporated. And I believe artificial intelligence is gonna make a change that we can't even foresee. I think the growth is gonna be incredible. The profits are gonna get bigger. And when you start mixing quantum computing with artificial intelligence, I really have no clue how big that can be. But just for that reason alone, I'd be keeping my eye on QUBT. But VS and Taboola, both have got a lot of potential and they're just a few of the companies working with AI. Do your due diligence and you'll find a lot more. Remember folks, the more you know, the more you're gonna grow. See ya.